checking out the garden. I think everybody should plant a garden. This is a small one, nothing to brag about, but it's better than nothing. I've got some tomato plants. They're starting to shoot up pretty good. It's been raining a lot here all week long. Rain, rain, rain. But I got my baskets up. Oh, got a tomato right there. Got a few others. Won't be long, we'll be picking tomatoes. Anyway, it's raining right now. I was going to do a video for y'all. I was going to clear off the cabin spot. I actually picked one. I did get me a couple of ducks for the pond. Here's one of them. We're going to go up and feed him. Quack, quack. Quack, 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 quack. Quack, 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 quack. Quack, 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 quack. Come here, buddy. Quack, quack. Quack, 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 quack. Come on up, meat, buddy. There you go. Quack, quack, quack. I had two. I know I mentioned my ducks to y'all in the other video. My co-worker gave me two. And uh, I'd be darned if I didn't come out here about two weeks later. And something had killed one of my ducks. And... I think it was a turtle. Now I've not seen any turtles in this pond in years. I don't come down here a lot and go fishing though. I just don't have time. I know that sounds kind of weird. You got a pond, you don't have time to fish in it. But I have not seen any turtles. But it don't, it's the only thing that makes sense because the duck was floating in the water. Uh, if it would have been a predator, a land predator, I believe it would have took, taken the duck with it and ate it. Anyway, friends, I have chosen a totally different location over here. Now, I'm going to go over the reasons why. I'm not going to yap about it too long, but uh, before, if y'all remember, I'll zoom you in. We was thinking about that location right over there, facing back at the house. I kind of scratched that one off. Well, then, right over there, was the other location looking back down the long way of the pond but the only problem with these two locations is how far away they are i would have to cut a lot of trees over here just to be able to get the loader around there and i don't want to cut a lot of my trees i don't like cutting trees unless i have to now keep in mind i could have designed or made like a log arch and made a path wide enough that i could have got them over there that way maybe four or five at the time but i'm choosing this location right here and you'll still be kind of looking at the diagonal of the pond i'll take you over here and we'll look I weasel my way through the brush here see we're still going to have a good view from right here you're going to be looking over at the dam. The sun is still setting over that way. So this is not a bad location right here. The house will be up there. So I'm going to clear all this out right here. And this is where I'm going to put the cabin. I'll be able to come right through here with all the logs. My loader will reach up at least a good nine foot. So I'll be able to basically set all my logs. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go a little higher than normal on the side walls because I won't, I won't dig overhangs. And if if you look at older structures like your really old homes that have big overhangs, they seem to last longer because you're keeping that water from splashing up on the sides of the house. You get more protection from the elements that way. So I won't, if I make my walls high enough. It won't block my windows having that big overhang because I'm going to have a steep pitch on the roof, if you remember. There goes my duck. Poor fella, lost his friend. I can't win for losing when it comes to ducks. Boy, the rain's starting to come down. So I'm going to wrap this up and get back in the shop. I've got a little, I got some tiny D logs made of scrap lumber. We're going to go over a game plan. I hope you can hear for the rain hitting the roof. But basically what I've done, I took some scrap lumber that I've got and I basically made some D logs. This is what I'll be doing. And I'm only talking about this again for the people that may not 
know what a D log is. You're like, okay, he's saying D log, what does that mean? Most of you know what that means, but just say this is a regular round log. I'm going to go to my sawmill. I'm going to cut three sides of that log flat, and one side is going to have the natural round face. This is what they call button pass. You'll have the log in the center that's butting up against the other one and then the next log will pass this log will actually pass that's butt and pass but that's crudely kind of how that how it, how it will look and of course the inside will be nice and flat you'll have flat walls in there and some people will come to the corners of the insides of those logs and put a chamfer on it. A little angle, maybe like a 45 or something to give you a little bead right there for decor, you know, decorative purposes. Kind of break up that solidness or whatever. But uh, what I'm thinking about doing is I like, I like the chinking joint. Uh, you can't do a chinking with a button pass. You don't really have... A joint to speak of. This is how it would kind of look. But what I think I'm going to try to do is with this little model, I'm going to do a saddle notch. Okay, friends, the rain's finally stopped, so maybe you can hear me better. Uh, what I've done off camera was I took all my logs and I crudely scribed them oh there's a little thunder i crudely scribed them so that they uh, i believe this is called a saddle notch if i'm not mistaken but i'll hold this model up so you can see how a d-log with a saddle notch would look and as you can see that looks pretty good i like that i've got the chinking gap that i wanted it's a simple enough notch that a first-timer like me can do it. I feel confident in it. You see how the insides will look. I just feel better about doing it this way. Now, I would really love to learn how to do the dovetail notches. To me, in my opinion, I think the dovetail is probably the best notch because you know the weight coming down the way they're cut at an angle the weight of the log is keeping them pulled tightly in the corners tightly together as that weight bears down but keep in mind the same thing with a saddle notch not as it's not as tight of a joint i feel as a dovetail is but it's a simple enough notch that a first timer like me can you know scribe each log to fit and if you get the math right, you know, by cutting three sides of the logs, you know that's a uniform thickness all the way across. So it's going to be easy to get these notches perfect as far as your gap is concerned. Right in here, a friend of mine had mentioned, you know, you could take and cut a narrow strip of wood and put in the center of each log. That way the, the weight transfer is solid all the way down through. But I think what I'm going to do, you know, right here I'm crudely demonstrating, let's say this is a window that I'm going to cut out later after the logs are in place. I would come in here and put a uh, wooden block inside everywhere that I plan to put a timber lock screw down through. That way you'd have solid transfer from one log to the other, load bearing. Of course I would timber lock the corners and beside each of the openings and if there's no opening of course I would just put a set amount down through there and if, if I do have a wall that has no windows I could just like my friend suggested put a uh, put a strip down the middle that is you know narrower than the log so you've got room for your chink inside and out and that's giving you the weight transfer so that's how I'm going to go about it but uh, I just think that looks great. I really do. This is crude, keep in mind. But instead of getting on the computer and, and uh, drawing this up on software, I'm old school. I like to get out here and just tinker, use my scrap lumber to kind of give you a material 
model to look at. I mean, I've seen a lot of videos, and there's nothing wrong with that, you know, using the software on the computer. But I would just rather do it like this. I've got something I can put my hands on. I can look at it. And uh, to me, that just looks great. I'm really excited for this build. I'm going to get my chink joint. I'm going to have an interlocking corners. And two, what I like about the chink joint idea is, you know, this is going to be an off-grid cabin, no power. But down the road, if I decide that I want to put power on this cabin, I am going to do solar. But uh, later down the road, if I want to run power, even the solar, I can come inside these chink joints on the inside. And if I determine where I want the receptacles to be, I can tear a chink and join out and hide my wires. I can run them that way. Now, I don't want to run the wires on the inside in any kind of conduit. I just think that would look tacky and too modernized. I want to try to stay true to the old look. And by having that uh, chinking joint, I think I'd be able to take advantage of that in the future and tear it out wherever I had to run hot wires in there and seal it back up. I think it's going to be great. Man, I'm looking forward to this build. And I promised, you know, in June we were going to start this build up. We're still in June, but... You know, we, we had Father's Day, and my wife had a birthday on Father's Day weekend, so, you know, I've been really busy here lately, and this whole week it's done nothing but rain, and if I'm not mistaken, it's going to rain all weekend, it, we've just been hammered, but I will say that's good for my garden, the little garden I showed y'all, but you can see how that inside's going to look, I like that, I really do, man, really excited for this. Just keep showing you a few more angles. And two, I think I mentioned I wanted it to be kind of like a classic chalet, chalet or whatever it is. I kind of want the side looking out over the pond to be mainly windows. I want a lot of windows, especially up in the gables. I want windows there so that when you're back here in the loft area, you can look out. We mentioned that before. But uh, two, I want to take this time to mention, I have the Sheffield Woodworks Facebook page up now. So follow me on Facebook, it'll be Sheffield Woodworks. Of course, the, uh, the main picture is still the cedar wishing well, and there's a little small picture that has me holding a baby deer. So that will be the page if you're looking for it. I don't have many posts on it yet. Uh, I think I put one up with a few of my swing builds. And if you all want, if you're doing my swing build, I want you to share those pictures on there. And with that, friends, I think I'm going to quit rambling. I think you've seen enough here to get the idea of what we're going to do. I really like this right here. This is nice. The only thing I would like nicer than this is being able to figure out the dovetail corners. But this here is going to be nice. You can see it here. That's exactly how it's going to look. You know, you'll scribe each log so this one fits down perfect. These are crude. But that's going to give us the gap we want. We're going to get nice locking corners. We're going to timber lock that baby together. And come back later and chink it. But anyway friends, I appreciate you watching this video. Stay tuned. I believe uh, my next uh, move is going to be getting out here and clearing off that spot I showed y'all where the cabin's going to go. Uh, you know, I had those two initial places I was going to use, but... The place I picked is going to work out way better. It's not going to impede the view of the pond. And it's going to be a little bit closer. I'll be able to get around it with my loader. Not have to take out so many trees. And uh, still have a really nice view. But anyway, thanks for watching. I appreciate you all. Like, comment, subscribe, share if you want to. And look for me on Facebook. Uh, the job foreman's here. Hello, Puss and Boots. The foreman says to like and subscribe. And so far, he approves this build. Ain't that right, Puss and Boots? Meow. That's my outside cat. <laughs>